Hello, I am Kimmy with On William Street, and we are here to help you become a more confident quilter from the piecing to the quilting and everything in between. So this week we are going to do a fun new free motion quilting motif. Don't forget, everything that we talk about in today's video, you can also find in a blog post on our website. So we'll go ahead and make sure that that is linked below. So you can see diagrams of the motifs and step-by-step um, -step on how to quilt those out as well. And then also while you're there, don't forget to check out our shop where we have lots of fun modern quilting patterns, perfect for your next project. So the motif that we're going to stitch out this week is a checkerboard design, but it's not going to be stitched. You're not gonna stitch out the lines. It's going to be create a checkerboard from the design. And it's really kind of a basic, um, a variation on the back and forth lines or a basic stipple. It's gonna be very similar motion, just a lot of nice smooth motions back and forth. Just changing the direction that you're going is gonna create a fun checkerboard pattern. Okay, so with this grid-based design, I do have the grid marked out here already. Um, I have a two inch grid, but as with most grid-based designs, you can really make these very small, you can make them very big. And this grid I'm showing you that I have marked out here, but we're not going to actually stitch it. So the only stitching we're gonna have is what you're gonna see with the purple. We're not going to have any of the um, brown lines won't, won't show. We're gonna create this checkerboard pattern simply by alternating the direction of the stitching that we're doing. So if you, you know, stippled on a quilt, it's really very similar. The thing to remember is we want to always work in odd numbers. So we're gonna go down and up and down and up an odd number of times. So if you have very big squares, it's probably gonna be, you know, 13, 15 times. If you have small squares, it might be as, as few as three times, but it always needs to be at least an odd number. So on this one, we're probably gonna do one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna do five. So I'm gonna start at the top here, and we're just gonna go down, we're gonna curve back up, two, three, nope, four, five, I'm gonna do seven, six, seven. Now it's going to always start stop me in the opposite corner that I started, and that's what I want. So from this corner, we're gonna go this way, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now you can see it's moving us along the, the, uh, the grid here. From here, we're gonna look back down, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just try to keep the spacing even. If it's not perfectly even, that's fine. That's kind of what we're going for here is nice, even spacing. So from here, um, if this is kind of the end of your motif, the end of the quilt, I am gonna go ahead, you're gonna have to travel down the side here to get to the next spot. So this I would probably do, you know, along a seam or something like that if possible. From here, we're going to keep going down and we're gonna work our way back the opposite direction. From here, we're gonna go this way. And back down, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and back this way. So from here, same thing, just kind of travel down the side here and then carry on. And like I said, my spacing was a little skinny there, so just try to keep it even. It'll be fine in this grand scheme of things. I'm just gonna move along there and then just try to pay a little bit closer attention to having my spacing a little more than even. And back down. And then keep going. So like I said, you can do this very small as a nice tight background fill. I've worked it in rows, you know, in, in backgrounds to create some fun stripes behind some appliques in different shapes. You could do it big. You can fill in an entire um, quilt top with this. If you have more of a block-based design, you could easily use this to fill in the different squares. Um, and it also is kind of nice because it works kind of in rows, so it's easy to maneuver on your domestic quilting machine. So let's go ahead and now head over to the machine and actually stitch it out. So for this checkerboard design, we've already got the, the grid marked out. I've just used some school chalk here. Hopefully you can kind of see it well enough. Um, that's gonna go away when we're done. We're just gonna wash that out and it's not going to be there. So we're gonna work the, 
the design in the grid, but not sew the grid itself. So remember, we're going to work in rows of five. So again, I've got the two inch squares marked here. I mean, odd numbered rows. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four. I'm probably just gonna go ahead and do mine a little bit wider with the sewing and do them about five um, to fill in each grid. I'm gonna need to space them out just a little bit further um, to fill in the rest of these. But you can see I've got my five here and that put me at the opposite corner, so now I'm gonna go this way. So that's much better spacing. You can see I'm pretty close to that top corner, which is kind of what you want. So just practice that spacing and get that so that you've got it pretty consistently from edge to edge. So now we're gonna come over here and we're going to do the next one and we're just gonna carry on. So I'm gonna leave it like this because really it's gonna be a lot easier if we're not moving our quilt back and forth. So you're just gonna work back and forth opposite across the machine, across the fabric. Okay, so now that we're to this corner, we're just gonna go along the edge of our design here, back to this corner. Something to keep in mind. You can see my stitching very well. I'm using a dark blue thread on this medium green fabric, specifically so that you can see the stitching. You don't have to use thread that contrasts quite so much. You want your stitching to blend in and just be more of a texture. Or maybe you're new to free motion quilting, you don't want it to stand out nearly as much. Definitely use a thread that matches and that's gonna make a big difference on that. When you're practicing though, you know, use whatever thread you have on hand, you know, whatever bobbins, all your half filled bobbins, those are great to use for practice. And then we're just going to keep going and we're just gonna alternate back and forth those five lines back and forth and fill in our entire grip. Now we have our fun checkerboard quilting pattern all done. And you can see without having those lines in the background, you really just get this fun back and forth checkerboard design with going, with alternating the direction of those lines. So if you have any questions on this, don't forget you can check out the blog post. We're gonna have all the diagrams and the quilting path and everything there. The big thing to remember with this one is um, an odd number of lines. However many you decide to fill in here, whether it's big and you're doing a whole bunch or whether it's small and you're only doing a few, just keep those numbers odd and that's gonna help you move across the top really easily. So check out the blog post, check out the diagrams, check out all the written directions there if that's helpful to you. And then while you're there, don't forget to check out our shop where we have a lot of fun modern quilting patterns and projects ready for you to sew up. You can also find us on Instagram and Facebook. And if you sign up for our email newsletter list, you'll get alerted whenever we post a new video so you don't miss any. You'll also get anytime we have specials or deals or new products or any you know, fun things that we want to share with you, you'll be notified of all of that as well. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out and we'll see you next time.